The G1X Mark III is Canon's most powerful compact camera we've ever made. In this video, we're going to go through some of the basic features of the G1X Mark III and explore them together. This is a really impressive camera. If you're not after something that's big, then this is the perfect camera for you. It has a lot of features that the digital SLR cameras have, but it'll still fit in your pocket. Let's take a bit of a look through the buttons and features on the G1X Mark III in detail. Just having a quick look around the camera to start with, we notice a few familiar buttons across the top, such as our mode dials, on off, shutter release, and we also have an exposure compensation dial here. We'll go into a little bit more detail further soon. One of the things that makes this camera really versatile and easy to use is on the front we have two uh, adjustment dials. First, we have an aperture adjustment ring, which is built into the lens. This will allow us to adjust our aperture very quickly with the twist of a wrist. Also on the front, you'll notice a multifunction dial, which will allow us to change our shutter speed when we're in TV mode or manual mode. This dial can also be custom function set to do other things. Also, while looking at the top of the camera, you'll notice that there is a built-in flash. On this model, this is manually operated simply by lifting the flash up, and placing it back down when you're finished. Behind the flash, you'll notice there's a hot shoe connection. This connection is perfect for external speed lights. On the rear of this model, you'll notice that there is a built-in electronic viewfinder. This is great if you want to use your eye rather than using the screen on the back to get your composition to take great photos. This model also features a flip-out touchscreen. Currently packed away, I simply pull this out to the side, rotate, and replace. The G1X Mark III also comes with a lens cap, so be sure to remove this before you start taking pictures. In reference to the screen, this is also a touchscreen model, which means I can simply press on the item that I would like to change and rotate the front multifunction dial accordingly. In this example, I can change the shutter speed quite easily or use my finger to swipe up or down. Aperture is as easy as touching and swiping. Over to the right hand side, you'll also notice a few buttons. Right at the top left where your thumb rests is a little red dot. This is the movie record start stop. Below that we have a star or asterisk key. This is your exposure lock button, same as on your EOS cameras. To the right of this, we also have an autofocus point selection key. This allows us to change the point of focus anywhere on the screen we wish and also activate multiple focus points. You'll also notice on the rear, this has a rotational dial just like on an EOS camera. This dial will adjust our ISO when we're in manual mode, but it also functions in an up, down, left, right manner. Let's have a look at some of the different features. If I push the up key at this stage, it allows us to select our drive mode. At the moment, I'm in single frame. I can also select high speed continuous or a low speed continuous setting. This is handy for high speed action. In relation to flash options, this camera has a manual pop-up flash. We can still leave the flash up and using the right key, turn this flash on or off. Alternatively, we can just put the flash down and it's off. The bottom or down key is the info key. This will allow us to cycle through the various bits of information we have available on our rear screen, such as having just a clean image, an image overlaid with some of the basic data such as shutter speed and aperture, or we can also activate an electronic level at the bottom of the screen and histogram. To the left hand side, we have our focusing options. At the moment, the camera is set up for normal focusing mode. If we press the left key, we have the option to change it to macro. This is handy if you're taking photos of small things, jewelry, bugs, insects. Otherwise, we also have a manual focus option, which inactivates the front ring to become our manual focus. At the bottom of the camera, you'll notice a playback button. This is simply to jump in to look at the photos that are on the memory card, and then we can use our finger to swipe left or right to go through the images or rotate the rear wheel left or right. To come out of playback mode, we can press that one more time, or we can simply tap the shutter ready to take another photo. Down the right hand side of the camera where your hand grips, you'll notice that there are some ports available hiding behind a rubber flap. So just behind this flap here, you'll find there's a connection for a shutter release remote. There is a USB connection and also a HDMI output. So you've got all the connections you could possibly need to plug it into external devices. Also worth noting at the very bottom on the right hand side, this enables very fast access and ease of transfer of photos between your Canon camera and your smart device. As this model also does video, you'll notice at the top either side of the hot shoe, a left and right stereo microphone. And also in the left hand side at the bottom, a speaker for playback. 
In the bottom of the camera, you'll find a compartment where the battery and memory card is housed. With the fingernail, you can remove the battery for external charging or replacement. And to remove the memory card, simply push to remove and to insert, push again, and you'll hear a click. Close the compartment and you're ready to go. Just focusing on the dials on top for a moment. On off is fairly self-explanatory, but let's have a look at some of these other dials on top and explain what they do. Apart from the on off key, just in front of that, you've got your main shutter release button on this camera. If you half press, you will autofocus. Full press will take a photo. Just on the outside of this shutter release key, you'll notice a toggle. It allows us to frame our composition perfectly before we take an image. Another dial on top is an exposure compensation dial. This is a great fast access feature, which will allow us to increase or decrease our exposure simply by turning the dial up or down accordingly. If I'm looking at my composition and I think it's too bright, without having to change any other setting, I can simply turn my exposure compensation down to darken the image or turn it up to increase the brightness. Another handy tip for you when playing with exposure compensation is make sure you reset it to zero between frames. Over to the top left, you'll notice the main mode dial for this camera. Like many of the EOS cameras, this has a locking button in the center of the dial. So to turn the dial, it is currently locked. We would need to put our thumb in the center to unlock and turn the dial accordingly to the mode that we wish to use. This locking button is a great feature. Mainly because this camera is pocket sized, it would be easy to change the mode dial unknowingly. You'll also notice with this model that when you put your eye up to the viewfinder, the screen turns off. There is a little diode in next to the electronic viewfinder, which detects when your face is present and turns the screen off, saving battery power and also creating less distractions. Let's have a look at how we can change our aperture to change our creative effect. Firstly on top, I've selected the AV mode on my mode dial. You'll notice on the rear screen, I'm presented with a composition of three items. At the moment, I'm shooting at f5.6. This will give me a very shallow depth of field. If I half press on the shutter release button, you'll notice a green box illuminates. This signifies that the image is in focus and all it's waiting for is me to push a little harder to take the photo. When I play back this photo, you'll notice that our first object is quite sharp through to the background is quite soft. This is what we call a shallow depth of field and it's great from separating a subject from a busy background. What if we wanna get everything in focus though? It might be a landscape, you're standing in front of a monument that's important. We wanna capture everything. What we'll do is we'll have a look at increasing our aperture towards F22 to get a greater depth of field. When in AV mode, to do this, all we need to do is use our front multifunction dial and rotate to the right. Taking this image at a higher f-stop number is going to increase our depth of field. Let's have a look at what happens. Now we're in playback, you can clearly see all three items are in focus. Aperture is great for separating our subjects from a busy background, but what if our subject's moving? We need to investigate TV mode. Changing my top dial to TV, I now have the opportunity to change my shutter speed. Again, using the front multifunction wheel, I can change my shutter speed from slow, maybe it could be a half a second, through to high speed at maybe a thousandth of a second. Whilst looking at the rear screen here, you'll notice that I have a spinner. If I shoot this at one one thousandth of a second, this is fast enough to arrest any movement in the frame. What if I wanna show movement though? If I wanna take a picture of a beautiful waterfall in action, maybe what I would do is suggest bringing my shutter speed down to a thirtieth of a second, for example. I'm gonna put my spinner in motion when I play back this photo, which was taken at a 30th of a second, you can clearly see movement in the image. If we compare that now to our thousandth of a second image, which we took moments ago, you can see that it is sharp and motionless. TV mode can be used to really help the viewer at home appreciate the movement in the composition and really help tell a story. Next, we're gonna have a look at manual mode. I'm gonna change my dial on top to M for manual. And now I have control of both depth of field and shutter speed. When I'm in manual mode, this top multifunction wheel here controls my shutter speed. And the multifunction wheel around the outside of the lens controls my aperture. The G1X Mark III also has some fairly advanced video functions. To record video in this model, all you've got to do is use your right thumb to press the record key. Two things will happen. Firstly, you'll notice that the red record symbol comes up signifying that the camera is currently recording. Secondly, you'll notice a timer counter starting at the top of the screen in seconds and minutes, showing you how long the clip is at this stage. To stop the clip at any stage, 
just push the button one more time, you'll notice the memory card light starts flashing, signifying that it's saving the video to the memory card. To play this back, we would simply hit play. Using the touch screen, we can just hit play on the screen and it'll start playing back automatically. That was recording video generally, but if we wanna have a little bit more fun with our video, we also have the ability to do time-lapse and some pretty cool effects. Let's have a look at those. Up on the top dial here, you'll notice that there is a video symbol. When we're inside the standard movie mode, we actually have the option here to use the touch screen in the top left hand corner to select between standard, which is what we've just shown you, short clip, which takes a series of small videos, perfect for the traveler who wants to come home and show an entire week's worth of journey in just a few seconds. We also have a full manual video mode, allowing us maximum flexibility in terms of using our aperture and shutter speed to get creative. But the feature I'd really like to show you is the inbuilt time-lapse mode. To get to time-lapse, push the top left-hand key, come down to time-lapse movie, OK to confirm. All we need to do now is select the interval and how many shots we would like in the video before progressing. To change the time-lapse settings, you'll find a button on the screen down the left-hand corner. Press this, will take you into the time-lapse movie settings. We can change things such as the interval between photos, whether that be set for three seconds currently, right up to a minute. We can also change how many shots we would like to take in the sequence. A really key feature of this camera is it gives you some information at the bottom about how long it's gonna to take to capture this and how long the playback time will be. So for example, at a three second interval, for 300 photos, that's gonna take 15 minutes to complete, and the playback of that time-lapse will take 12 seconds to watch. So you can adjust those two intervals according to what you would like to time-lapse. Okay to set and go, and then simply push the record button to begin the time-lapse. You'll notice during the time-lapse, down the bottom of the screen between photos, it will give you an indication of what photo it's up to, or what frame it's up to, sorry, and how many frames there are total to do. The cool thing about this time-lapse movie feature is it actually builds the result for us in camera. So we can go to playback and watch it immediately, which means no double handling, no need to use any software to process our time-lapse videos. This camera also has a bunch of preset scene modes, which makes it really easy for shooting some creative compositions. Let's explore the scene modes in the top dial here. Just changing over to SCN. When we're in scene modes, you'll notice there's a button in the top left-hand corner. Currently mine's set to portrait. By pressing this button, it gives us a bunch of options such as self-portrait, smooth skin, panorama, panning, stars. I can also go down to find a few more handheld night scenes, grainy black and white, soft focus, fisheye effect. Why don't you have a go at the scene modes yourself and see what they can do for you. Another thing you may want to do is move your AF points around the screen. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Firstly, we've got an AF point selection button on the back that we can press and then move the AF points using the up, down, and left and right arrows, or alternatively, take advantage of the touch screen and simply touch the part of the screen that you want in focus, and it'll automatically jump to that point. You can either hit set to confirm this, or simply start shooting. Another great feature of this model is its inbuilt ND filter. What is it? Well, firstly, ND stands for neutral density, and essentially it's like putting a pair of sunglasses on your camera. If you're shooting a scene such as sunset and it's just too bright for the settings that you'd like to use, you can activate an ND filter, which essentially makes the scene darker. To get to our ND filter, all we have to do is press set on the rear wheel, navigate down so you see ND. Move it to on and you'll notice that the screen gets darker initially. This is your ND filter on setting. You're ready to start shooting. Remember when playing with the ND filter, when you're finished using it, make sure you turn it back off. This model also has adjustable AF modes. To get to these, we simply hit set, and you'll notice at the top here, one shot and servo modes are available. A short explanation is one shot is focus locking, allowing you to half press, lock onto a subject, and then take a frame, perfect for portraits and landscapes. As where servo mode, on the other hand, is perfect for moving objects, whether you're shooting surfing, sport, kids running around the backyard. Servo mode will track your subject and allow you to constantly focus on them throughout your composition. Another feature of the AF modes in this camera is face detection versus single point autofocus. If we would wanted to turn on face detection, we hit set 
At the very top, you'll see AF mode options. We can scroll across to face detection. Face detection is great if you're doing videos or taking photos of people, uh, and they're the most important part of the frame. It ignores the autofocus point that you'd currently set and simply locks onto people's faces. The camera also has the ability to give you a little bit more information on the screen. You can cycle through the info button down the bottom right hand corner of the camera to go through some of the options. Firstly, we've got a nice plain image with no information. If we push it one more time, we get some basic data such as shutter speed, aperture and ISO. If we press that one more time, we also get a live histogram and really cool feature is the electronic viewfinder at the bottom. So if you're trying to find your horizon in a tricky situation, you can use that electronic viewfinder to help you get the horizon straight. As you may be aware, this camera has the ability to shoot RAW and JPEG files. What if you had shot RAW and you wanted a JPEG image? It's really easy to turn a RAW into a JPEG with this camera. Let me show you how. Select playback. Look for the image that you would like to process into a JPEG. Press set. Navigate down until you see the RAW to JPEG conversion option. Press set one more time. It asks you to confirm. OK and within seconds, you've got a JPEG file. Over the bottom here, you'll also notice a Wi-Fi button. This button allows you to connect to your smart device and download photos from the camera directly. Please refer to our embedded video on how to connect your camera to your smart device. I hope this video has helped you to get a little bit more information and familiar with your G1X Mark III.